Okay, so I'm going to try to briefly uh, uh, plug Debian in the paper cup. Uh, so uh, there, there are a bunch of great things about Debian, and uh, uh, none of them are, are unique to Debian. There are other package uh, distributors which care about the same issues and, and address them in varying degrees of success. Um, but the two I want to uh, cover are uh, the Debian technical policy, which is an overarching set of rules which uh, ensures a coherent uh, set of packages that are well integrated and all work together. And uh, the other is the Debian copyright file. So there are over 20,000 source packages in Debian and each one has a copyright file. And uh, there's the uh, traditional freeform uh, copyright format, uh, and then there is a newer machine-readable copyright format. And uh, the assurance you get uh, when using Debian main is uh, not only will you have uh, well integrated, uh, technically excellent packages, but you're going to get free software and uh, its license is going to be described accurately. So uh, if this copyright file is out of date or if it's inaccurate, uh, this is considered a bug. If you file the bug, Debian will fix it. Um, if there is a uh, license violation, copyright infringement, uh, this is a bug, and Debian will fix it. Uh, these bugs are treated uh, as more serious than most other types of bugs. Um, so if you are using Debian um, either on bare metal or in the cloud, you have uh, assurance that you're probably not uh, breaking any copyright law, and um, you're probably not going to have to expend effort to uh, make sure things work. So as we move more into the world of uh, ephemeral instances and uh, continuous delivery pipelines and uh, a situation where uh, dot-com startups are uh, grabbing software uh, from various sources off the net. Uh, people are losing out on this, uh, this feature of Debian. So with continuous integration, you can test to see uh, whether the software you're getting uh, works with the, the end products you're preparing to deploy, but you can't really do license tests because the metadata are not there upstream. Um, our colleague Aaron Williamson uh, scoured the wilds of GitHub uh, a little while ago and found that uh, most uh, developers don't care about licensing at all or don't understand it. And so uh, if you are getting software from um, RubyGems or Python eggs or uh, GitHub repositories or people's blogs, uh, you may be putting yourself more at uh, legal risk than you realize. And so, uh, what I would like to suggest is that uh, people support Debian in getting more and more software packaged for Debian so uh, the license analysis can be done and uh, this can be uh, less of a worry for everyone using Debian. So uh, I think I've left uh, almost enough time for Ian. So, uh, thank you for listening. Oh, yes.
I, so I don't, I'm, I'm a little biased uh, because I've been uh, working on Debian for 17 year old years. Um, I don't know what, uh, what level of scrutiny Arch uh, does. Um, so uh, I, I assume they, they do some uh, looking at licenses and uh, some integration work, but I, to what extent, I don't know. Um, sure. There's also just a significantly smaller pool of packages available in Arch, uh, which is difficult if you know, you're trying to build ephemeral instances and uh, stacks of applications. Um, I don't know whether or not that's true, but... Uh, I'll stand by that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you.